I'm Amy Howard, and I've had the privilege of designing and manufacturing a line of furniture for 23 years for presidents and rock stars alike. But I'm more excited now to be able to show you how to rescue, restore, and redecorate the more than eight and a half million tons of furniture that we throw away in this country every year. One of the greatest and easiest ways to be able to do it is with our One Step Paint. It allows you to be able to rescue those pieces in one easy step. So, here, let's go. All right, so today we're actually going to be rescuing and restoring um, a kitchen cabinet that we have. As you can see, this is probably from the 70s, and a lot of like the pieces of furniture that you're going to be finding, they're gonna be really dirty, um, there's gonna be a little grime on them, and also there was probably gonna be several applications of lacquer, waxes, shellacs, things that would have naturally happened over the life course of the piece that you're actually gonna be rescuing. So one of the first things we need to do, it's gonna be really important to clean it. We wanna make sure that we use a degreaser. That's gonna get the grime and everything off. So using a lint-free rag, I'm going to just be cleaning this piece. I wanna make sure that I don't use a terry cloth because then it's gonna be leaving little particles of fabric around. So it's really important to use a lint-free rag. A lot of people will ask me, what makes your paint different? I love it because one, it's made in the US. Two, it does not contain methanol. Methanol is a toxic ingredient that for people that are asthmatic like myself, that it can affect them. Also, it does not have to be sealed. So part of the beauty of our One Step Paint, it has that beautiful matte chalky finish like you would find on an old antique, but you don't have to seal it with wax if you want it to have that beautiful finish and not look antiqued. Another thing that you can do is you can add our Bright Idea lacquer to it so it can be a great looking shiny glossy lacquer piece. Also you can add the waxes which I'm going to show you in this video if you want it to look aged. So the first thing you need to do is when you buy your One Step Paint, turn it upside down. And the reason for that is because this is all natural, it's green, and it doesn't have the chemicals and the ingredients in it that a normal acrylic or latex paint will. That allows the yummy ingredients that may have settled at the bottom to come to the top of the can. So while you're doing that, you're basically getting all of your materials together. Then after it's sat there for about 30 or 45 minutes, you wanna be able to shake your can very well, making sure all the ingredients are equally distributed in the can. Then I'm actually going to take a stir stick and I wanna make sure that I'm getting down into the bottom and that it's stirred up very, very well. Now, I've made sure that my cabinet door that I'm working on is, has completely dried and I'm gonna start painting. So in this video, I'm using one of our hog hair brushes. You can use a china bristle, you can use a synthetic brush, you can also spray this on. So you wanna make sure that you cut it about 20% with water throw it in your airless sprayer and spray it. So you'll notice as I'm applying this, I'm kind of doing it in some cross hatching. I don't really want to be showing the size of the tool that I'm using, so I'm actually going in different directions. Now you can also paint with the grain. And I love the fact too that especially with our black one-step paint. It's a true black. It's really beautiful. It's gonna look great on these kitchen cabinets, but I also love the fact that it's gonna dry in about 20 to 30 minutes. So as I'm working on my kitchen, I can literally finish today. The other thing I love about the One Step Paint is it allows me to be able to start my piece. You'll notice I didn't sand it, I didn't strip it, and I didn't have to prime it with anything. I love the fact that I can also use it on a brick fireplace, I can use it on tile. Maybe there's an old chair that I find and I don't want to have to go to the expense of reupholstering it. I can thin the One Step Paint down with half water and half One Step Paint and I can paint my, my fabric. I don't have to reupholster my piece. So there are so many ways to be able to use this to rescue your pieces, literally in moments. One thing to remember, it's one step, not one coat. So on this particular piece, I am actually gonna come back and just kinda here and there, add a little bit more black paint. 
Then as it started to tack up a little bit, I'm just going to finesse my brush strokes that I originally did in my application to make the piece where it's just a little bit more refined. Now, so my piece is dried, and when I noticed the detailing on the cabinet door, I thought, you know what, that would look really nice if I added some gilding to it. So what I did is I taped it off just to be able to expose only this area so I'd be able to work on it. And I laid down some boule, which is a red color that you'll see show up a lot of times underneath a gold leaf. And then I laid my leaf on top of it and I'm just starting to kind of burnish it off. I do have another video that is strictly on gilding. So if you wanna watch that, that'll be able to show you how to actually do this process. And I want to get some of the residue off. Then I'm going to be really careful to remove my tape. So I'm going to come back with a little bit of steel wool. I like 4 aught because it's really, really fine. I don't use sandpaper ever on when I add gold leaf to my to my pieces of furniture or cabinetry or whatever. So I'm the reason I'm using the steel wool is just to be able to get a little bit of wear through. So one, I might see the first coat of the black one step that I applied. I may see some of the red that I added, but it just makes it look a little aged because I've decided that I'm going to go on and wax them to make them look like they they might have just a little bit of age to them. Now remember, if I don't want to wax them, I don't have to. I had a friend of mine that was asking me, he was gonna be painting his concrete fireplace, and he said, could we paint our concrete fireplace or our brick fireplace with a one step? And I said, absolutely. You do wanna thin it down a little bit because it's really, really thick. And let's say we add 20 to 30% water to it. Stir it up well, and then paint it on your, on your brick. I do want to make sure that we get the soot off. We want to use a degreaser, clean it off very well, and then, um, then apply the one-step paint. If you do want to get to this point and you do want it to be aged, we need to add the wax. So a lot of people will say, do I have to use the light wax? Is it a two-step process? Absolutely. So the first thing we want to do is take our light antique wax. And the reason it's called light antique it's because it's a combination of carnauba and beeswax, so it has a beautiful color. So I'm gonna take my China Bristle Amy Howard at Home brush. I'm going to offload it onto a piece of cardboard. The reason I do this is I never wanna go directly from my container of wax onto my piece. It could be too much, and then it's actually gonna take longer to dry, and I've wasted more wax. So I'm offloading. You'll notice my wrist, how it's constantly turning. And then I'm going to come back all over. I'm coming over my gold leaf as well as the piece itself. Notice again how my wrist is turning. You see if I painted it this direction, I would have a tendency to overlap and then I would have lines. When I'm working vigorously like this and moving my wrist, I don't get that. The wax smells wonderful. It has a very clean, natural smell because it's beeswax and carnauba. I'm going to let my wax dry for about 15 or 20 minutes. So I'm gonna go on and work on another one of my cabinet doors because I do want it to reach what we call is a tack. It's a tack that it's not greasy, it's not moving around, but it's dry enough that I can come back and add my dark antique wax without it creating a third wax. If I put the dark wax on now, it would literally mix in with the first application of light antique wax and make a third color. I don't want that. So I'm gonna allow this to completely dry for about 15 or 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna come back with the dark antique wax just where the piece would normally get dirty. So I'm gonna come back here, same process again of getting the wax on my brush, offloading it. It's really important to make sure that you offload it so there's very little showing. That's going to allow me more control when I'm actually antiquing it. So I'm going to come and pounce on my, my gold leaf first. 
just to kind of set it back. It's really kind of shiny right now and I don't want it to be. Since I'm trying to make it look old, I want to set this gold back. And you see how very carefully I am pouncing it. I don't want to overdo it. Then I'm going to come back onto the actual surface of the flat part of the cabinet. And there again, do you see how my wrist is moving? Dry brushing my dark wax here and there. You're not going to see it as much on the black, but let's say, for instance, my piece was the house buff, or if it was a pale blue, it would be showing up. So I want to be very, very careful as how much I'm applying. I'm going to focus on the outer edges on a lighter color, and I'm just going to kind of fan it here and there because I don't want it to be overdone at all. I do want this to set and dry there again to that beautiful tack point for about 15, 20 minutes. Then I'm gonna come back and I'm going to apply the dust of ages. And I always give the analogy to my students in class. When you go into a museum and you see those incredible frames hanging on the wall and they're beautifully carved, when you look down in the crevices, you'll see dust of the ages. Now taking a nice, clean, dry brush, I'm going to dip it into my dust of ages. I'm going to make sure I'm focused on getting it into the crevices of where this trim is. Now you'll notice there is some residue of dust coming up, so if you're not in a ventilated area, you need to be sure and wear a dust mask, just for safety. I'm going to distribute it just a little bit because it actually will help with part of the finish and the color and making it look old into the black, and I love how that does in my finish. A lot of people are really surprised how generous I am with it, especially when I'm working on a carved surface. I use a lot. Now, a lot of people will say, can I reuse this? If you want to dust it off to be able to put it in a little container or put it back in the jar, absolutely. So again, I'm using a lint-free rag. I want, you'll see how I've got a large rag. It's not a small piece because as I'm buffing it, I want to make sure that my fingers don't show through. So buffing like you would a shoe, think about that motion of a hit drag buffing, that's how I'm going to buff my cabinet. The thing that I love about this most is you think about those cabinets when you go into a kitchen, which if you're not aware, that's one of the most expensive areas to actually restore and redecorate. So here within a few hours, and a couple of quarts of my black one step, I will have transformed my entire kitchen. So as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about how amazing it would be to be able to have a zinc top as my counter. Maybe this was a piece of furniture that I rescued. You can use the same process of the one step paint your light wax, your dark wax, and your dust of ages on rescuing and restoring just about anything. I want to make sure that I've, I've evenly buffed it. I'm going to leave some of this dust of ages in the crevices because I like what that does with my age. I like the detail that it gives me too. And I'll notice some of the cross hatching that I've got from my application of going back and forth in the beginning. That's all very desirable. So now, go enjoy the bracket.